And we back. We're here with another banger of an episode. Got Zach Woolchuck, who's incredibly humble, but he does fantastic work too. So I'm glad to have him on the program. Zach Woolchuck, uh, 105.3 The Fan, G-Bag Nation, 2 to 7, and the draft show. I'm very jealous because I'm not, I'm not jealous. I don't want to say I'm jealous, but I just want to, I want to do that one day. Draft show is like peak this thing that we do, you know what I'm saying? And yes. I think I'm close. So one day, hopefully I can, I can, I can be in your shoes. Zach, what's happening, man? Man, uh, it, it's great. Yeah, I mean, we are so close. We're in draft month now. Mm-hmm. So it, everything just seems like, okay, all the work you've been putting in now, it's kind of about finalizing our grades, finalizing our boards. This is a special time, but absolutely, dude, I had that same goal. I was like, I grew up watching the draft show. Yeah. Well, I, I was spoiled. I, I happened to have a little bit of an in because I do a show with Brian Broaddus. Mm-hmm. So that was a little bit easier for me. Yeah. So I was able to fulfill my dream of being on the draft show. I have no doubt we will get you on there one day. One day, man. We're going to work on it. But let's do our draft show right now. Let's do the Vachin, do the Vachin Wooly Bully show. Um, <clears throat> it, it sucks when I have to ask this question like this because you never really think about it till you say it like this. The Cowboys mm-hmm. got three undrafted free agents on their offensive line. And if we don't do nothing about it, that's what it's going to be. This yeah. is a this is a loaded question with a lot of words, and you know what I mean when I ask you this. Are you willing to stick with this configuration? If not, what would you add to it? And what would you do with Tyler Smith in that in that configuration? The thing they have to add is a center. Mm-hmm. To me, I think center is the biggest need, period. So that's why my and, and I've I've been on this train since December when I started watching tape on December first. Graham Barton, I watched him one time from Duke, left tackle at Duke, yeah. has experience, as you know, yeah. across the line of scrimmage. I learned the phrase piano player. Mm. That dude is a piano player. He can play all up and down the field. To me, I, I'm not worried about the projection. I love the play temperament. And I feel like coming out of the end of the season, we were looking at this team needs to have more attitude. This team needs to be more nasty. This team needs to be physical. Graham Barton is all of those things. My first line in my notes is this dude wants to flatten you and let you know about it. And it's true. He's mean. He's nasty. Uh, and really, we have not seen that offensive line be the same ever since Travis Frederick retired. So I think it is such a critically important position. I think you can look at it, and I know people have heard this before the final four teams in the conference championship games outside of maybe San Francisco, sure. they all had elite centers. So I, I think it is priority number one. And to me, depending on what they come away with in the first round, if Graham Barton ends up being taken ahead of them, which very well could happen. Cause I think there's, there's injury concerns about Jackson Powers Johnson. Sure. And he was the guy that kind of became elevated throughout this whole thing. I've still got Barton as my top guy. Sure. JPJ would be number two followed by Zach Frazier, the center from West Virginia. Mm -hmm. But uh, to me, that's priority number one. And then you pivot to tackle if for some reason that guy's not on the board. Yeah, I'm not really trying to move um, um, Tyler Smith. I want him to be a guard. He is an all-pro guard. And and, and I just had a conversation with uh, David Hellman from Fox Sports. (laughs) And I asked him, I was like, hey, man, you know, Zach Martin has enough clout to, if they want him to move to tackle, he just say, nah, and it's just over with. So I wondered, does Tyler Smith has, the, the, like, he's a pro, he's all pro now, right? Does he have that kind of okay. clout where I'm like, yo, Tyler, we need you to play left tackle. Can Tyler look at them and go, nah, <laughs> nah, I'm an all pro here. I'm I'm comfortable here. I like mauling people here. I got this jump set here. I feel great here. I had a conversation with Duke Mannyweather the other day. Yeah, I'm the Mongo, yeah. The Mongo, the Mongo. Duke, Duke is the man. He's he's so good. He is so stoic, and he does not. I, I love to laugh and tell jokes. He's stoic as hell. But Duke gets so passionate about not moving Tyler to left tackle at all. He he doesn't want to change up the skill set. Okay. And Tyler and Tyler is an incredible incredible talent that maybe he you know performed above expected at tackle, but he's no all pro at tackle. He's an all pro at guard. So in my mind, Zach, and this is what we're gonna have to deal with. At the bottom of the first round, that's what we're dealing with because Cowboys win games. At the bottom of the first round, we got right tackles, and we got mm-hmm. a dude in um, Jordan Morgan that the Dallas Cowboys may consider regard, and that, and that upsets the hell yeah. out of me. So me too. what's your answer at left tackle? Okay. If you want to leave Tyler Smith at guard, mm-hmm. we take Barton in the first round. 
the name and the only tackle outside of kind of the first round projections because I'm not a Logan Paul guy out of uh, Houston, the, the tackle from Houston. Patrick not Paul. a fan. Mm-hmm. Patrick Paul. Yep. Patrick Paul, I apologize. Mm-hmm. Uh, Logan Paul, of course, is getting ready to fight. Well, he's not. That's Jake Paul. But Logan, the, the other boxer, YouTube guy. Same okay, thing. Kieran, and, and if I pronounce his name wrong, I apologize to you, Kieran. The Yale offensive tackle. Kieran Amegadeji. Yeah. How did I do, Botch? I've been calling him Kieran Amadilija for three days, and I know that ain't right. So, I mean, your, okay. yours is way better than me, but go ahead. Either way, uh, we, we need to get your name right because this dude's a hell of a player. And I don't know if you've watched him. I assume you have. Yeah. He reminds me of Tyler. Sure. Kind of the, the, the body type, uh, yeah. the width, the way he plays. Mm-hmm. And he fires off the ball. He's violent in the run game. He's consistent to me in his pass sets. Now, granted, he played at Yale. So mm-hmm. the tapes I watched are like Morgan State, Holy Cross, Dartmouth. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I want to see you dominate. You know, if, if you're playing those lower level comp- – and, and to me, he did. So he's the guy to me that I would take a chance on at offensive tackle in say the third round um if i were to go somewhere else it's in the second i've got him as a third round player i hope he makes it mm-hmm. but to me that would be that would be a home run backup plan he's my favorite of kind of the second wave of yeah. offensive tackles i agree i'm not willing to gamble on patrick paul uh well i take that back kingsley sewell matea can yeah I, Okay. I don't want to start him right now type of you know what I mean? I'm I'm not I'm not ready for him right now, but maybe you can, you know, parlay that athleticism into something. Me personally, and I'm I hate to say this, but I just had to be honest, I just don't think Patrick Paul is all that good at all. I just don't think he's he's that oh, good. Oh no, I agree with you. Yeah. hundred percent. I I'm I'm out on him. I don't think he's a good player. Yeah. Dominic uh Puny, possibly, but I just don't think he's playing right now. And Matt Gunn Calvis, you might as well roll with uh uh Josh Ball. Oh my gosh. Josh Ball and Walesco in there. Same thing. Same dude. Watch Thank you, because I know you are a badass when it comes to offensive linemen. You were on the uh, big right tackle from Ohio State from day one last year, and that yes, dude sir. was a badass. Wow. I was with you. Yeah, I didn't yes, know yes. why he kept on falling and sliding in that draft. Sure. Uh, but, yes, I don't think Paul can play at all, and I don't know what they see in this Pittsburgh kid. He's yeah. not a good tackle, no. and to me, he's not a good enough athlete to be able to move inside and play guard. He do, he's not strong. Right. He has no upper body strength. Mm-hmm. So I have no idea what they're doing with that whole gun Calvis 30 visit thing. But, Zach... There's another thirty visit. The shit don't make sense. But what if? What? But what if that's the reason why he's a he's a thirty visit? Zach? What if we're looking here and they go, you know what? I don't mm. want to roll the dice on Tyler Guyton and you know Mims is inexperienced and you know maybe we let's just say maybe we look at J C Latham as a guard. I'm talking about the Cowboys now. Okay. And maybe we don't like the day two guys to come in and play tackle and Duke Manny Weathers cussing Mike Solari out because maybe they had this picture on Twitter where they smiling. Duke don't smile, so I don't know. I don't know what that was about. So maybe their idea is, hey man, we didn't lie when we say we're all in. We 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 not buying no damn free agents. But Zach Wolcha, what if our all in is parlaying some picks and going to get some goddamn Tyleese Fuwaga? What if that's the all in? Oh. My gosh, you want to go get Fuaga? Now, I'm assuming you believe he can he can play left tackle in this scenario. He's my offensive tackle one, and I think when you have dudes like that, they can play either side. They can play guard, they can play tackle, wherever you want to put them. They can okay. play free safety. I, I put them anywhere. I, I, I love that you have that because I think Joe Alt, and Joe Alt is great, and sure. Joe Alt has a lot of great traits. Mm-hmm. But Joe Alt also has, to me, when I watched him, and he's a Notre Dame lineman, so he's probably going to be awesome and play for 10 years. Mm-hmm. But I did see... Like, for whatever reason, my football gut was saying bust potential here. Mm. I don't get that with Fashanu from Penn State. Sure. Some people want to say Fashanu is a finished product, and this is kind of the player you're getting. To me, that's fine. Sure. The guy's consistent as hell. He's strong. He, I mean, t- to me, he's I- – I had him borderline the number one tackle, but I'm with you. Sure. Fawaga's the guy. Yeah. Fawaga's the best run-blocking tackle in this draft. Yeah. And I agree with you. At first, when I watched him, I thought, okay – right tackle or maybe you can kick him in and play him at left or right guard. The more I keep circling back and I've watched some other Oregon State tape, that dude's special. 
Zach, he really, really is. This was this was the 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 very first play I ran into. Right, I'm like, oh snap, best Leatu Latu. I know, yes. I know who that is. Let's see what Fuaga. You know. Let's see what Fuaga does against Latu, and he just leaves the screen. Look, Zach. Whenever somebody leaves the screen, I'm just gonna run some more film. Whenever somebody leaves the screen. I'm like, bro, that's all you need. And the more you watch him, you just look at his feet and you just look at how he uses his hands and, and, and you just look at, he's not the perfect pass blocker right now, but he wins ugly. It's your job yeah. as a coach to make him win pretty. Now run mm -hmm. game, run game, he win pretty as hell. He win pretty as hell in the run game. But it's your job as a coach to teach him how to win pretty in the pass game. I'm taking Tullis, if I can get him, he's my tackle one. If I can get him, your look, this is cutting the defense in half right here, Woolchuck. Hey, climb. Look, and, and 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 I don't know what it is about these athletic the Islander kids, because I don't want to call him Samoan and he's Tongan. I don't want to call him Hawaiian if he's Polynesian, whatever. But but he's super athlete guy on top of block you off the film guy. And he has great knee bend and he can pass block really well. He's a great combo he guy. He makes he's his a he, great combo guy. He makes his guards better. I'm looking yeah. at Fuaga. I'm like, man, I uh, you know, I uh, Joe Alt's cool, but Joe Alt doesn't win loudly. That's the term I use on my channel. Look, you either win loud or you win quiet. Joe Alt wins quietly, but he wins. Yes. And Joe Alt's kind of leany does. sometimes, but he wins quietly. Fuaga wins in violent fashion, and I love violence, so I'm taking I'm, I'm taking Fuaga. Straight I up. love what you're saying. Yeah, Joe Alt is like the the pretty boy. Like sure. he's the mold of like, oh my god, that's what we wanted an NFL offensive tackle. Sure. He moves so well. He's huge. He's massive. To me, he's three. He he's three. Mm. If I'm trusting my football heart, mm. it's Fuaga, it's Fashanu, mm -hmm. and then it is Joe Alt. And uh, and it's nothing against the player, but I'm with you, dude. Fuaga is great. What if I could convince you? Because you know he's a badass right tackle, mm -hmm. and he's probably going to be an All Pro right tackle. Sure. And the fact that you're telling me Duke does not want to move Tyler definitely makes me think. Okay, we need to leave him at left guard because I trust what Duke says. He's basically gospel, but. Mm -hmm. I do believe Tyler can be a very good left tackle. Sure. He proved it his rookie year. Sure. I think he could possibly be an all-pro mm -hmm. left tackle on that side. Much like Jerry said, the Larry Allen comparison I think is valid here. That's not one that he's blowing smoke. I think that's accurate. Yeah. I think T.J. Bass can play. Sure. I if agree. If you play T.J. Bass at left guard and you circle back later in the draft and mm -hmm. you take a Bo Limmer from Arkansas, or maybe it is Zach Frazier slides to you from West Virginia in the second round, or a Hunter Norjad from Penn State, and you address center, that might be your best five. And it's not a knock on Terrence Steele. The sure. dude works his ass off. Yeah. And before he got hurt, him and Zach Morton were the best run blocking tandem in football. But until we see that guy again, yeah. that might be your best starting five. And, you know, I'm not really sure what uh, Terrence's contract looks like or whatnot, but I do think that if Fawaga comes in today, I'm picking up the phone, like, hey, y'all like Terrence Steele? Hey, uh, Cincinnati, y'all like Terrence Steele? Sure. Hey, hey, uh, uh, Browns, y'all like Terrence Steele? I'm taking phone calls because I got damn Talese Fuaga. And, but but that's if, you know, you feel like he can play the right side. But maybe he – if Terrence Steele could, could play left tackle, this would be a much easier conversation. But Terrence Steele doesn't right. want to – you know, he don't want to hold you down that way. The whole thing but about – To your oh, point, please, if, please. They, if they think Fuaga can play left, sure. then it doesn't matter. It doesn't but matter. Then it's going void. It doesn't matter. It just, you know, I don't have as much faith in – um well – I can say that, but I'm just ready to be dominant at center, man. I'm ready to, I'm re because I just feel like we've seen Dak Prescott deal with nonsense at left tackle, whether it be both the cams, uh, whether it be uh, Chuma Dogan don't know the plays, whether it be Matt Ball, uh, uh, well, Matt Ball and, 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 and Josh and Josh will let's go. Same thing. Whether they are left tackle, Dak Prescott knows how to navigate that. I go back to the first game against the Eagles. Uh, everybody's beating the hell out of Terrence Steele consistently, but Dak knows how to navigate that and still make it work. When, when something's happening, you know, guard, center, A gap, B gap, or whatever, Dak can't handle that as well, right? So I want to upgrade center because beyond yeah. this, Beata's got us killed in the run game and pass blocking, right? So I want to upgrade center. If that's Graham Barton, I'm going to jail and we're going to Golden Corral. Um, but it just sucks that we don't know what we have in Austin Richards. That's the that's the one thing mm -hmm. I wish we can find out. And I know we were trying to win games. We were playing Chuma and all that. But, man, I just wanted to know because if, if Awesome's a dude, but we don't know it, then, hell, then Awesome's your left tackle, right? But now we don't know. 
So now we're like, damn, what are we going to do at left tackle? So what my best five looks like, man, TJ Bass could be my center and my best five. But I just don't want to move Tyler because he's an all-pro, and I just don't want to be getting rid of all-pros like that. That's fair. Uh, yeah. In which case, and if they feel the same way, then we will draft accordingly. But if it is center in the first round, which I'm hoping it is, and I hope it's Graham Barton, heck, I'd move back. And if indeed your medical staff clears JPJ for whatever it might be that is causing him to slide out of first rounds of mock drafts, mm-hmm. to me, it, it's got to be a medical issue, right? I mean, there's that, that's the only thing. The film is undeniable. The guy's a badass. Yeah. But if you slide back with, say, Kansas City, if they want to leave Buffalo to go get a wide receiver or even Buffalo, uh, and you require an extra pick, I'm, I'm down to gamble and take that risk at center. And then you circle back and you get a tackle later on. Jordan Morgan at guard is Connor Williams at guard. Am I right or wrong there? True or false? Because he doesn't show that he has, like, amazing upper body strength. Is that why you're saying that? He's not a super powerful guy, but he's a great athlete. So he can do all the movement blocks for you, but yeah. he, but he's not going to dig Dexter Lawrence out of A-gap at all. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right on that. Like, okay. I think against the the big 300-plus pounders like a Deron Payne, mm-hmm. he, he might struggle a little bit there. But he does have an uncanny ability to adjust. Mm -hmm. Like that guy will get off balance and he will find a way to adjust his hand placement or his body weight. And he will block a guy with one foot up in the air. Mm -hmm. I've never quite seen that before. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know. I I do think that Jordan Morgan actually, I would lean more towards the side of, I think he could be like, you kick a Zach Martin inside and be awesome. But he, he, he definitely does not have the strength that Zach Martin had coming out. But I don't know. There's something about him. I think he understands the game. He yeah. gets what he needs to do to survive. Yeah. That I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I love him. Great Ben, black belt, beat the hell out of um out of uh, Latu. If anybody beats beats Latu, they get all the respect in the world for me because Latu beat the hell out of everybody else. You know what I'm saying? But uh, let me ask you this. In a doomsday scenario in which no offensive lineman is there that you like, okay, Byron Murphy or Cooper DeGene? Wow, that is a phenomenal question because I think Cooper DeGene uh, could end up, to me, I wonder if teams want to move him to safety Mm -hmm. uh, because he's just a freak athlete. And I wonder if he could be a a rare kind of sideline to sideline type of dude Mm -hmm. uh, in that regard. I think for for the Cowboys, I'd probably go Byron Murphy. I think I'm going to have Byron Murphy. Right now, he's rated a little bit higher for me Mm -hmm. uh, than Cooper DeGene, but Man, the returnability for Cooper is is serious. I mean, the the guy won games for Iowa single handedly, mm-hmm. essentially, because he was able to get punt and kick returns. So I, there is something about him that I love, and I think Mike Zimmer would love him, and sure. he might be a perfect Zimmer might be the perfect coach for a guy like Cooper DeGene. But I think I would lean Byron Murphy. I I think Murphy has some rare traits as a defensive tackle, and I am admittedly biased. I covered the guy in high school. Uh, coming out of DeSoto, so so I'm rooting for him. Tavian Sanders is another one of my guys. Amani Bailey is another one of my guys. I used to call the Den Ryan game. So I'm definitely biased when it comes to some of those dudes. But Byron Murphy does have some rare ability. And you've seen Osa, and I love Osa. Uh, I, I put it out on the show last year leading in training camp. Like Osa Digizuo was my breakout guy. I thought he'd be a Pro Bowl type of player. But he has worn down the last two seasons. And it might be because – it, it, it's on, like they can't take him off the field. Sure. So if you find a guy that at least has maybe a similar skill set, but I think also plays the run a little bit better because he's bigger, yeah. um, it, it might help Osa as well. Like to me, I, it's not a one or a three tech defensive tackle conversation. I'd love to get a one, but you did draft Mozzie Smith in the first round. You have to at least see that through. Yeah. And you need to hope that Mozzie steps up this off season. That's your one tech. Ideally, that's what you drafted him to be let him go ahead and fulfill that potential. To me, I just want to take the best defensive tackle available. Uh, I do think Byron Murphy would be my option between those two, and I'm sorry for the long answer. No, no, you're good. I think if Cooper DeGene can't play outside corner for you, I would use him like um, Brian Burns. I would use him like the Lions use him. Just let him be nickel dude, let him be safety dude, let him chase around tight ends and stuff, and I think that'll work. And, and he can do everything teams-wise for you. He can return, yes. he can run down and yes. tackle. Um as far as Byron Murphy goes, man, you just you just need one tech. You you, you need it re- real bad right now because right now Mozzie is your one tech. Your last hope is in um, Seattle right now with uh, Coach um, Durde. So, would you take uh, Braden Fisk over Byron Murphy? No, 
I am I I'm hu- I'm much higher on Byron Murphy because Byron Murphy got a black belt in D line, if that makes sense. Braden yeah. Bra- Braden Fisk is an athlete, and I learned that because he he used to he used to be a uh, be an edge guy, you know, back in directional Michigan, wherever the hell he played. So okay, mm-hmm. so, all right, cool, that makes sense. You're a big edge dude playing three tech right now. But as far as film, I think Byron Murphy has the much better film. Just my own personal opinion. Yeah. So so how about this though? What if what if you got to look at, with cowboy needs in mind, right? Byron Murphy or or Edrin Cooper because I think Edrin Edrin Cooper is a first round pick in this draft here. Which one of those guys for you? Okay, I will Assume. I will say I think you like Edrin Cooper a little bit more than me. Ooh. My only fear with Edrin Cooper, and honestly, it's a silly fear because mm-hmm. the most important thing is finding guys that can get after the quarterback. Mm-hmm. But I wonder if he honestly like ends up being a Micah Parsons type of player mm. where his best attribute is like, let that guy rush. Sure. Like, why are you dropping him back into coverage? That guy had 10 sacks last year for Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. And when you watch him rush, like the, the speed, the quickness, he does have a feel for it. It's a rawness to his game because obviously he's blitzing as a linebacker, but you, you do see those traits and intangibles where damn that, that to me, that's the best part about him. Mm-hmm. I think it's his ability to get after the quarterback, but yes, you see the downhill. He is actually going to crush a running back in space. Uh, he he is a hell of a player. To me, I do think Peyton Wilson's the best linebacker in the draft. I, agree. I would rather draft Peyton Wilson if the medical is all checked out. I don't think they will for any team. The dude's had a ridiculous amount of surgeries. But I, I'm with you for this, for the Cowboys, and where I have them on my board, I think I would lean Edger and Cooper. In, in, in a trade back scenario, you're talking about 24. Mm-hmm. You're talking 24? Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It, it would be a reach for me. It, it really would. I don't like Edrin Cooper as much as you do, but he is a freak athlete, and for this team, I think I would lean Cooper over Murphy, yeah. Okay, so you'll be mad as hell if the Cowboys took in, in the first round. You'll, you'll be mad as hell if they took. It's weird uh, because I think that it's likely – that any player from this position group could be arguably the best player on the board at the time. Mm-hmm. But I would be mad if they took a wide receiver. I totally agree. I totally agree. And I don't care I don't care what receiver it is. Keon yeah. Coleman out of Florida State, Brian sure. Thomas out of LSU, Vlad McConkey out of Georgia, name who Xavier Worthy out of Texas, Adonai Mitchell out of Texas. And, and I love a lot of those dudes. Yeah. But wide receiver is without a doubt the and D B really corners pretty deep. But wide receiver is the deepest position in this class. There is no need when you have so many other holes, you've got to come away with an offensive lineman. To me, that's, that's really it. The only other position would be the ones we talked about. You know, if Edger and Cooper's there, if a Laitu Latu's there and you've cleared him medically, I'm taking him. If a Jared Burse is there, I'd consider that out of Florida State. But, yeah, it, it, it's any receiver. I, I don't think you need to be taking one in the first round because you can get a great one in the third. I literally think there are three rounds worth of worth of wide receivers that are better than Jalen Tolbert, like just better, than, like, like just better than Jalen Tolbert. I asked yeah. y'all this on the draft show a couple of weeks ago, or whatever uh, Twitter on the Twitter on the twenty situation, right? And I was like, in three rounds, and then I gave y'all four positions: O line, D tackle, linebacker, wide receiver. Which mm-hmm. one would you not go with? And everybody was kind of like consensus: oh, wide receiver stretches. We don't need wide receiver, and that's cool. I feel you, but here's the context, right? Cowboys don't have a fourth round pick. You you just don't have Mm -hmm. one right now. And yes, wide receiver stretches, but what's the point of getting a fifth round wide receiver that's not better than Jalen Tobert or Jalen Brooks right now? You know what I'm saying? So in my mind, the reason you would get wide receiver, I think you'd be upset if you walked out of this draft and didn't get one of these dudes, right? Whether it was, you know, whether it was uh, Pearsall, Mitchell, um, um, cowing from Arizona, like it, it. No matter who you get, I can Corley. look. At, I can look at that guy and be like, "Yo, I can play this dude over Jalen Tolbert right this second. So I, I'm, I'm, I, I would be upset if we didn't get wide receiver in round two or three, specifically round two or three. You agree? Yeah, I, I, I do. I think the third round is kind of the sweet spot. That's why, in a perfect world, and it's going to be tough because I think the only way you can do it is if Graham Barton's gone. If Graham Barton's there at 24, I don't know if you can take the risk. I think you might just need to stay in and pick him. But I think in a perfect world, you're trading back a few slots, whether it's with Buffalo, whether it's with Kansas City, San Francisco, whoever it might be, and you're picking up an extra three. Mm -hmm. I've seen some weird scenarios where they want to give you a two. Cool with me. If they want to overpay, awesome. Most likely, you get a three, okay? 
in that scenario, yes, the the added value of the pick, that's where I want to take a wide receiver as the third round. That's where I think you're going to be able to get a Javon Baker out of UCF, maybe uh, Jalen Polk. Who knows if he slides from Washington? I love J Mac, Jalen yeah. McMillan from yeah. Washington. Yeah. I don't know how you feel about him, dude. I, I watch that guy and I'm like, he's got it. He gets it. Mm-hmm. That guy just has a feel for it. He's smooth. He can play inside. He can play outside. Like to me, his game just translates to the NFL. It doesn't matter what you do with him. That guy will find a way to succeed. I love Jalen McMillan. If he was there in the third round, I would take him hundred percent, but I think you really are going to have to come away with offense, tackler, center, linebacker, or running back. Mm-hmm. And then with the extra pick, that's where you can play around and take maybe a wide receiver. But I, I think the trade back is really what this team's going to need to do. Corley or Leggett? Gosh, dang it. That's a, oh, I hate that you're asking me this. I love both of these guys. I really do. Mm-hmm. Leggett is some, like a body type that I feel like this team has just not had. Maybe Terrell Owens. Sure. Like he's a he's a rare physical. Like he's DK Metcalf Jr. Yeah. You know when you watch him, uh, I think I would go with Malachi Corley. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, and I and I know you're pulling up Leggett's highlights right now, and, and I love that you're doing this. You're an absolute badass, but. Leggett, I love. I think Corley is better. Mm. When you watch Corley, I think that the the different types of ways you could use him, and obviously you're going to need a creative offensive coordinator, but his athleticism is off the charts. He's quick off the ball. He he is really good when it comes to contested catches, but the yak, I mean, the yak with him is rare. It's Malik Neighbors, and then it's Malachi Corley. Yeah. With you guys in this draft that are, that are best after the catch. He runs like similar to Debo Samuel. I know that's the sexy calm, but he does. He runs like a running back after he uh, catches the football and he wins. And, and I think that, yes, he played at Western Kentucky. His tape against Ohio State is awesome. And then when you watch him at the Senior Bowl, he torched everybody that he went up against. To me, the dude's just a gamer. Like, I, I love Malachi Corley. I think he's probably higher. Him and Ladd McConkey yeah. are the two guys that I think are higher on teams' boards than we are giving them credit for. Because yeah. all those guys do is make plays. And uh, I, I would take Corley in that situation. But both of them are awesome. I would not be upset with Leggett. The thing about Ladd McConkey is you can tell when somebody's being like lazy with his analysis because you know you would you would think that somebody would just bunch him in with the other white guy receivers. But he's like a Cooper Cup. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he's bigger than them. He's faster than them. Uh, the route running is there, but he's also a sneaky yak guy. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think mm-hmm. that you wouldn't think that, you know, cause he's the small, or well, the small white guy is what the, what the right. thing, but, 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 but when you watch this and you have to really find it, right. Cause he, he only had like what 40 catches all year or something like this. You really got to dig and look for it, but he's got some yak. He got some end rounds. He got some, and he's run, he runs all the routes and everybody, mm-hmm. everybody on Georgia's offense blocks somebody. I like yeah. Matt McConkey, and I think he's a first round pick. So he's 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 not going to be for us, but whoever gets him, I think he'll be a first round guy somewhere. Speak a little truth, and people lose their minds, man. That is a hundred percent accurate. I had him going to the Bills in our first round mock on the draft show. I agree with you. I think he's a first rounder. Is Mozzie Smith the man next year, or are we going to have to sell our soul to find a one take? I'm going to be very vulnerable, and I'm going to be very honest with you here. I don't know. Last year was my first year doing the draft show. Mm-hmm. And I got to do day two and three coverage. Night one, and if you heard that text, I apologize. Uh, night one of the draft, I was at a pluckers with Gavin Dawson. They sent us out to a bunch of individual pluckers. When the pick was made, I was happy because they were addressing a position that I feel like they have neglected. They finally got a big bodied one tech that they needed, you know, that can sit there and man the line of scrimmage. I did think the P, the pick was a, a reach. I mean, I had Mozzie as like my 43rd best player last year. I had Bergeron higher than him, which we found out that ended up being the debate. I probably would have gone with Bergeron. So did I hate the pick? No. Did I love the pick? No. I do think Mozzie freaking cares. I think he's going to work his ass off. I think Zim's going to have a much better plan for him. I think he's going to be better. Mm-hmm. I don't know that Mozzie's ever going to live up to that first round expectation sure. that we that we have from Cowboys first round picks because we've been spoiled. A lot of them are Pro Bowl, All Pro players. They crush it in the first round. I think Mozzie's going to be a good player. Yeah. Uh, right now, it's going to be on him to see if he can become a great player. Random. 
Cooper BB or Christian Mahogany? Oh my gosh, really? It's just a talk, a conversation. It's Cooper BB. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just curious to see where you at. Because what I like to do is is bring people on, and I I want you to build your board in front of me. So it sounds like you're way high Cooper BB over Christian oh. Mahogany. Okay. So yeah. so what I would do at that point is I would then pivot and try to make you uncomfortable and be like, huh? all right, Cooper BB or Jackson Powers Johnson. JPJ. Hmm. But that's tough. That's tough for me because the two guys that I uh, – th- there's three players in this draft mm-hmm. that, that I rock for the most. It's Rand Barton out of Duke, and mm-hmm. Aisha Morrison actually makes fun of me for it. She's like, dude, you got a problem. We got to help you out with this. Because yeah. I do love me some Rand Barton. Sure. Uh, it is Javon Bullard, the safety from Georgia. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love him. I think that he is I, – I don't even want to say it um, but when it comes to a cowboy comparison mm-hmm. because it's an all-time great and a guy that should be in the Hall of Fame. But to me, he's a better Antoine Winfield Jr. Like, that guy covers the slot. He is the quarterback of that Georgia back uh, defensive backfield. He's getting everybody lined up. Mm-hmm. He knows where to be. He hits. I think there's a lot of versatility there. And then Super BB. Now, I watched Super BB a year ago before he decided to go back to K-State, and I was bummed that he decided to go back to K-State. Mm-hmm. But he also has that nasty play temperament. And I understand – People thought, people thought my guy Cooper Beebe was not an athlete. They're like, oh, this guy's stiff. He's a little slow off the ball. Mm -hmm. Oh, he can't go ahead and move in space and pull if you want him there. What did my guy do at the combine? Like Mm -hmm. Cooper Beebe said, shut up. I am an athlete. I can test well. You know what Cooper Beebe is as a football player? And honestly, if you were to draft him as a center fallback option, I feel like that guy could play. I mean, the football IQ is off the charts. I love him. He's rock solid. I think he's going to be a 10-year veteran in the NFL. How good he is, I don't know. But I think he's going to be a starter in the NFL. Does he reach accolades, you know, like all pros? We'll see. But those are the three guys that I rock for the most. They're three of my favorite players in the draft. There's a couple other pet cats in mind, but those are the top three. I love Cooper BB to pieces, and I'm about to start brainwashing people to like him a little more. Um, and and one way I'm going to do it is I'm going to tell my people guy. I'm going to tell people that Cooper BB is what you thought Osiris Torrance was, because I didn't think Osiris Torrance was all that great. I think I think he was just kind of a big dude, and people was all like, "Hey, he's big. That means he's strong." But Osiris Storms yes. wasn't he wasn't really strong to me. He was kind of lazy. He wasn't really mauling people. He was just heavy. Cooper Beebe is what y'all thought Osiris Torrance was in my mind. That's 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 how I would you know you know show it to somebody, present it to somebody. Yes, you're you're, you're seeing the love for the game. You're sure. seeing the play to the whistle. Yeah, right. You're seeing the I want to punish you. Yeah, Osiris Torrance, I'm with you. He had the athletic gift, uh, but that was it. Yeah. Cooper Beebe, there's no doubt. That dude loves football. Sure. Let me ask you a question, Zach, and this may be this 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 may be a tough one. Let me know how tough this is when I ask it to you, okay? Okay. Was Deuce Vaughn bad or was the Cowboys run scheme bad? Which one was it? Oh, the the run scheme was bad. Okay. I mean, anytime Deuce was put in the game, it was a backup offensive line that wasn't any good. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think it's fair to judge Deuce Vaughn. Now, I'm one of those guys that has, like, egg on my face right now because I thought that Deuce Vaughn would make an impact his rookie year Mm -hmm. uh, because I believed in him. Like, I I thought his tape out of Kansas State was really good. I did think he could find a way to impact, make an impact as a returner. Mm -hmm. That ain't for him. And that's why he ultimately is inactive at times is because he can't play special teams. He looks uncomfortable and whatever. But, yeah, uh, I, I think it was more a result of, really a lack of a running scheme. There, there isn't one. It's basic as hell. Um, and the offensive line that he was running behind. I think there was maybe one game we got to see him with the ones. Mm-hmm. And the first series was atrocious. And I think the second series was pretty good. So I, I wouldn't write off Deuce Vaughn. Random. Brandon Dorless or Michael Hall Jr.? Dorless. Yeah, I think Dorless. Yeah. Clearly? Like, 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 long, like, like clearly Dorless is better? I like Michael Hall. He has him and and like he's probably got the the best get off of all the defensive tackles. Mm-hmm. The the quickest twitch. Sure. Uh, I think Chop Robinson has it with the ends. Chop Chop is crazy with how fast he can get off the ball. Yeah. But I think Dorless is a guy that I I like the way he impacted the game for Oregon. That guy was a problem 
And I also think you can move him around. You can move him up and down the, the defensive line as well with his with his size. Doralis is, is really, really good. I'm a big fan of his. I'm a big fan of his and the uh, the, the Kansas defensive end as well. I think Austin both Booker. of those guys are – Yes, Booker. I think – Yeah. I, yeah, I think both of those guys are super underrated in this draft right now. Booker is strange because he's like – tall and lean and he looks like yes. a bend, like he looks like a bendy dude but he plays like a like a power rusher he's a he's he's a weird one but he's productive and he gets it done and he has a black belt in beating the dude across from him right yeah so there's Absolutely. gonna be yeah so i mean maybe a team drops him because like his testing i guess would be weird but on the tape uh austin booker is definitely a dude i made a tweet uh about a month ago i was like rank these down the line edges, right? I was like Booker, um, Kamara, Jonah Ellis, and Neyland. And I was mm-hmm. su- I was surprised at the amount of people that have Booker last. I'm like, man, y'all got Booker fucked up. Like, y'all, y'all, yeah. y'all, y'all sleep. You know, Jonah Ellis is a guy that got a great ball get out, but he don't, I don't think he knows D line all that well. He just kind of yeah. runs, he, he just kind of runs in a circle if you let him. Um, yeah. Neyland is kind of overrated, and, and Kamara is a savage. So it's out of Kamara and Booker for me, and I was just surprised that people didn't rank Booker a lot. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad that you said that Neyland is overrated. I have felt like I'm on an island over here. Yeah. When I watch Marshawn Neyland's tape, I was not allowed whatsoever. Sure. Like I, I get the guy crushed it at the Senior Bowl, and Nick Harris told me because he got to go to the Senior Bowl, he was more impressive in person. Maybe he is, and maybe I am totally wrong on the player. Mm-hmm. But what I'm basing off of is the the film that I'm watching and just trying to trust my eye. I didn't see it. Like I don't see Neyland winning a lot whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, so to me, I agree with you exactly how you rank. Like Mo, I, I love Mo Camara. I know he's got short arms. I know he's a smaller guy. Hustle, effort. Uh, I've heard some people compare him to like Bradley and I, like, yeah. could he be a Bradley and I type guy? I don't know. Uh, if you watch the Colorado game, that speaks for itself. Like Kamara yeah. crushed the game. It was insane. Back in the day, a long time ago, when I was a center, I had a coach tell me this about beating D linemen. The easiest D linemen to beat are big guys that play small and small guys that think they're playing big. Marshawn Neal ain't the biggest dude in the world, but I think he think he's wow. bigger than what he really is. So he tries to play strong but it don't work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he's then, so damn skinny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's not a big dude at all, but he thinks he's, he's playing big. And then there's the, 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 the big guy that does all the shaking and moving like, dog, you should be trying yeah. to run down the middle of somebody. Marshawn Neal is a small guy that tries to play big. I think he, I think he gets, he, he gets blocked a lot. I love it. I think you got those guys spot on. I agree with you. Rewind Brandon Dorless or Darius Robinson. Mm, that's actually closer for me. Yeah. And that's why you're asking it because it must be like an interesting conversation for you. Of course, uh, I do have Robinson graded higher than Dorless, mm-hmm. but I do like Dorless. Like, like I think Robinson is one of those guys just because I don't think that this is a great defensive end class mm-hmm. for me. Uh, there, there's some guys that like you're you're going to go based on the traits. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. know that there's like some ten plus sack dudes uh, all throughout this draft class. Yeah. So I think Robinson. I would probably lean towards over Doorless, but gosh dang it, I do love me some Doorless. Like, I don't think that guy's been talked about enough. I love that you brought him up. Yeah. But yeah, Robinson's another one of those guys uh, from Mizzou. They're similar kind of players. Robinson, to me, is just a natural defensive end, sure. where Doorless, I think you could kick out to end if you wanted to, or like, like much like they do with Tank, right? They're, they're going to rotate him from like three technique to uh, back out to the end, but I'd probably lean, yeah, I think Robinson. I asked you earlier which which player will we draft that'll kind of upset the hell at you. I I don't know what to think of Chop Robinson, right? Um, I think you have to figure out who you are as a um, talent evaluator. Are you floor guy? Are you ceiling guy? Are you technique guy? Or are you athlete guy? I'm super technique guy. I love a technical player. I love it when they can, you know – grab your wrist, pull, swim. I like watching um, Darius Robinson when he's snatching the hell out of people, mm-hmm. pull, pulling cloth, getting past yeah. guys, disrupting. But Chop Robinson, he wins, but he's notorious for running down the middle of people. And I think once your talent gets better, once your opponents get better, running down the middle of people won't work very well. But Michael Parsons runs down the middle of people all the time and it works. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of I'm kind of conflicted on this whole Chop Robinson thing, right? He's a super athlete, but I like technical guys. Where are you at with Chop Robinson? And what if he was a 24th overall guy? How would you feel? Do you think that you could teach Chop Robinson how to consistently finish? 
and that's my problem. I know Darius Robinson can finish right now. I know he can finish. I seen Darius right. Robinson beat the hell out of Georgia by himself. Mm-hmm. Chop Robinson can't finish. That's fair. Right. And, and that's the only issue for me. Mm-hmm. Chop Robinson would be my number one edge, and it wouldn't be even close sure. if that guy had the finishing ability of a light through lot to. Mm-hmm. Like when he's there and he gets in position, he makes the play. Chop Robinson will always get there and be in position because he is an absolute freak show, Mm -hmm. but he does not consistently make the play. He will rush himself out of pass lanes, out of run lanes. Uh, But my gosh, like his motor, the upper body strength, the long arms, I think he's got a good bull rush, but his his best attribute is his first step quickness. Mm -hmm. I mean, his first step is something that I don't think you can teach. And because of that, if the Cowboys were to take Chop Robinson at 24, I see the athletic upside. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I see the he, – he is probably the end. Much like if you were to take a Marius Mims out of Georgia, he's the guy worth taking the risk on. Could he be an absolute bust? A hundred percent. Yeah. But is he the guy that has the chance to be a perennial 15-sack guy? Yes, he is. Don't laugh when I say this, but this is what I would do with Chop Robinson. I feel like he overruns things by like three or four yards all the time. Put him at Mike Linebacker and just let him be the most Ooh. athletic dude on the field. And like you just back him up three yards. <laughs> so in my mind, he'll be right there if you just back him up a little bit. And then you 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 let him see it a little bit more, right? You you just give him a little more room. When he's yeah. down there in that phone booth, and sometimes Penn State lines him up in, in B gap. He still beat the hell out of the guards. Don't get me wrong, because he's faster than them. Yeah. But at least he can see the fight before he gets in it, as opposed to I'm coming out of my stance blind and having to do something. Let him mm-hmm. see first and then let him run to the football. I think Chop Robinson would be a pretty cool Will linebacker or a pretty good Mike linebacker, but I don't I don't think the league wants to do fun things like that. No, I don't. I think that they look at the pass rushing upside and ability, and that's going to be their focus. Uh, that would be the end-all, be-all. But I like where your head's at there. That, that would be an option, especially if he doesn't end up making it as a rush end. Mm-hmm. It could be a fallback. Maybe you do move him to linebacker because he's got that athleticism. I got two more questions I got for you, Will Chuck, and they all got something to do Let's with do it. They all got something to do with somebody's knee hurting. Okay. Um, okay. Is corner a need? When I was listening to Stephen Jones talk, it was like, Stephen, what about Gilmore? And it was like, well, you know, Gilmore, he, uh, he came in, did some good things for us, and we wish right. him well. We wish him well. I'm like, okay, well, that don't sound like Gilmore's coming back. And they signed Jordan Lewis. So. But in my mind, we don't know where where Diggs is at, and I know that. Mm-hmm. And and look, I'm 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 starting not to care that Doctor Cooper did the surgery because he, he, I mean, he did Gallup surgery. He still ain't coming back right, right? But major injury yeah. bothers me. Do we need a corner because we're not sure about Diggs and where he's going to come back? And you don't want um, Bland to just come back and be and just be cornerback one because we saw how that went. Bland is much better as a complimentary type type corner guy. Uh, do we have to draft corner? Like, is cornerback a sneaky need for us? Vaj, uh, I knew I liked you before we did this. You might be my spirit animal. As, as a cowboy fan, man, like the, the, we are, we are on the same wavelength with, with pretty much everything you said, bro. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, anytime I'm asked, what's the sneaky need for this team? It's corner. Yeah. And I, and it's because of the exact reason you gave this team puts a lot of reliance on players that they just expect to, you know, be themselves. But in reality, you never know how a player is going to come back from injury. Yeah. It's, some guys can hit the ground running. Some guys, it takes a little bit of time. We saw it with Tony Pollard last year. Tony Pollard said it himself. He didn't feel uh, the, himself until after Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've seen it. We'll see it with Overshone. You know, Overshone got hurt early enough where, where maybe he's fine. Sure. But with Diggs, absolutely, you need a contingency plan. I have been team re-sign Stephon Gilmore from day one. We did the old Yeller segment on G-Bag. I couldn't believe some of the stuff my co-hosts were saying about Gilmore, like, has he lost the step? Yada, yada, yada. Like, do you not remember watching the Seattle game? Yeah. And they literally said, okay, we need to have you go and travel with DK Metcalf yep. because he is kicking Deron Bland's ass. Yep. Do you not remember the A.J. Brown game where A.J. Brown ticked him off, called him old? And what did he proceed to do? Someday. He dominated A.J. Brown the entire game. So Stephon Gilmore is one of those guys who are like, I don't care how well he's running right now. 
the dude gets how to play the position mm -hmm. and he would be the perfect contingency plan for you in that scenario. I'm with you. I'd like to take Teron Bland back inside to slot corner. I think he's the, he can be the best slot corner in football. And that is a crazy valuable position. So yeah, I mean, at 56, I, I would hundred percent consider a TJ Tampa out of Iowa state sure. or a corner. Like I absolutely do think corner should be in play. Where you at on uh, Rake Straw from Missouri? Because Brian don't don't really like him a lot, but I love the physicality. I love coming up and thumping people. I love jamming the hell out of people, and I love talking trash. And Rake Straw is one of those dudes. What do you uh, where where do you have him, and what do you think of him? So he's uh, he's another one of those guys that I'm a little biased about because he went to Duncanville, okay. and I got to cover him in high school. And that dude, you're right. Like he is an absolute dog. To me, I'm with you. Like, I want my corners to have a little bit of swagger to their game. Mm -hmm. uh, Tr Trayvon Diggs has that. Like, he talks a bunch of shit. And he did it against Dak in training camp. And the media, the national media, blew that way up. Like, that's Trayvon Diggs. This defense this past year, you saw it. They lacked a little bit of attitude. They lacked a little bit of swagger because that's what Trayvon Diggs brings to that defense. Uh, they missed him for a multitude of different reasons. But that – was a big part of it. I love that for my corners. Like, I'm always looking for that compete. The The issue with Rake Straw is how much do you want to tackle? Mm -hmm. And I get it as a corner. Like, sometimes you don't have to be the guy that wants to go in there and be the most physical. But you have to at least be somebody that I can count on to set the edge on occasion or else teams are just going to attack you. But to me, he's a dude that can play on an island. He's willing to do it. That's something that you have to look at when you're evaluating corners. Some of these guys can't handle that. Like if I'm going to put them alone, ISO, man-to-man, -man, how do you react? Rake Straw can handle that. In fact, he welcomes that. Like you see that with him. Yeah. So I'm with you 100%. I like him as Rake Straw. I just need to find out what Zimmer likes, and then we'll just roll with him. Somebody, right. you know, um, somebody uh, gave me that. Did one of my one of my callers on my show? It was like, "Hey, man, Zimmer run a whole bunch of that match, and Bama does that a lot. What you think about Kool Aid?" And I'm I'm not that big of a fan of Kool Aid, but mm -hmm. it, it, but Kool Aid know the system, you know what I mean? So I mean, that's that that'll be a big help, but it, I, I I don't think Kool Aid all that good, man. I'm not gonna sit up here. I'm with you because Kool Aid McKinstry, it's the same thing. Like if you're gonna knock him or knock Rake Straw, it's the same thing with him. Yeah. Like, Kool-Aid McKinstry is running away from contact. Sure. That dude wants no part of that. He ain't trying to tackle, but he is fast as hell. Sure. He can run with everybody. Yeah. Kool-Aid versus uh, Texas would make you not even want to want to have him on your team. Mm -hmm. I was um I was uh I was mad at him, right? I was like, man, he's so trash versus Texas. I'm not gonna call him Kool-Aid. What's his real name? His real name was Jaquincy McKinstry. I said, fine, I'm gonna go back to call him Kool-Aid. I'm not gonna call this man Jaqu I was I was upset with how he was like um AD Mitchell and Xavier Worthy and whoever was running the ball and Quinn, they, they, were, him. they were picking on him all day. And I was like, man, this is discouraging. I don't care how well you do versus the little, the the bad opponents. You know, just like, show me what you do versus Texas in them. And he didn't do great versus Texas in them. So I, it, it's bad. Speaking of Texas. I think his, his teammate, Terry and Arnold, is the best corner in the draft. I want to ask you, what do you think about Nate Wiggins? The cornerback from Clemson. I'm not the biggest fan of Nate Wiggins. I like my my corners to be a little more girthy, pause. Um, but um, he he seems to be a guy that sometimes he's a really good corner, a really good man corner. But sometimes mm -hmm. I, I think he's a bit aloof. Um, and and anytime anytime physicality comes into play, you see his 160. Uh, so I'm not as as high on Nate Wiggins as as others. But if you can protect Nate Wiggins, and if you're not spending like a super high draft pick on it like like I, I, you know nate wiggins at 17 or something nah that'll make me hurt a little bit but if we were a trade back or if we found a way to get another day two pick or something and we ended up with 46 hell yeah i love nate wiggins at, at 46 but i think he's a bit aloof and small but he can't but he can man cover i'm with you 100 i think he's the second round guy the only two corners i have is round one grades are arnold and uh mitchell Toledo. Let me let me let me tell you what I love so much about Arnold, Tyrion Arnold, right? And I love storylines. I love anything that could be put into a documentary or a highlight tape, right? Tyrion Arnold versus LSU line up against Brian Thomas and beat the shit out of him terribly. And then Malik Neighbor started tearing stuff up over the middle over there. And somebody cussed somebody out and said, put Tarrant on Malik Neighbors. And we saw a heavyweight fight yes. with, with with Neighbors versus Arnold. But all of a sudden, Brian Thomas started going crazy as soon as they moved Tarrant on. You know what I'm saying? Right. So just watching those three players and those small movements, 
that says uh, that painted a hell of a story. So maybe people overrating the hell out of Brian Thomas and maybe uh Terry Arnold is a bad, bad boy because Malik Neighbors is my wide receiver one. But that's just my personal opinion. Ooh, I, I look, I'm not gonna fight you on that. I think the the top three receivers obviously Marvin Harrison Jr. Sure. Uh, neighbors in a dune day that yeah. like, they're probably two, three and four for me yeah. overall players in this entire draft. They're freaking nasty. But I do wonder th- there's a comp that I've seen Brian Thomas Jr. To T Higgins mm-hmm. for me. I'm like, no, I, I, I thought T Higgins was way better coming out. I think Brian Thomas Jr. Is like a Mike Williams. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I see. Yeah, like I, I don't think I love him in the first round. Yeah, maybe a little fat. He's 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 definitely faster than Mike Williams. But um, T T Higgins T Higgins was a star at Clemson. People people forget about yeah. T Wiggins. T Wiggins was a dude. He was a champion out there, man. And, and Brian Thomas is a guy. He's I I struggle with the run past you guys. Right, because you have to show me more than just run past you guys. So Troy Franklin, Brian Thomas. Um, yeah. Jermaine Burden, I respect them as run past you guys, but I'm looking to see what more you can do. What I can say about Xavier Worthy, he may be small, but I see him running routes. I see him catching the ball away from his body and all that. I see him with these high effort plays, and then I see him run past people. I'm like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, Troy is a better route runner than 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 some of those other guys, but I, I'm not crowning yeah. him as a route runner. But Brian Thomas is just a, a tall, fast, run past you guy, and I need to see more than tall, fast, run past you guy. I'm with you. He looks the part. Uh, he, he's everything you want in a wide receiver. But to me, I, like I've got Adonai Mitchell ahead of him. Yeah, yeah, me too. I got um, Mitchell and Lad McConkey higher than him. That's just my. I'm with you. That's my own personal yep. thing. Um, one last thing: we're we're talking about bad knees in Texas. Jonathan Brooks seems to be a Dallas Cowboy unless somebody else take him. Uh, does the knee bother you? And of course, you watch film and you got eyes. If his knee is fine, then he's a stud of a running back. We ain't got nothing to worry about. But it's the knee. And uh, is that knee bothering you so much that is it'll make you go, all right, we'll just go Keon, uh, not Keon Coleman, uh, Trey Benson, and just move on with our life. I have Trey Benson as a better back mm. uh, when I watch both of them, to be honest with you. Mm. I also love Jalen Wright out of Tennessee. Mm. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind waiting on Jalen Wright. I think Jalen Wright has a chance to be an absolute star. Sure. But I, I do like Jalen, Jonathan Brooks. Uh, I, I think Jonathan Brooks is an outstanding player. He doesn't have quite the long speed that I think Trey Benson has. Like you will see Jonathan Brooks sure. get fetched from behind. Mm. But he's physical. Uh, he's good in pass protection. He is sneaky good in the passing game. Um, so, yeah, I, it, it does make me a little nervous. But the Cowboys have more information than anybody else on him. So if they say, all right, let's do this, I'll give them a, the benefit of the doubt. Although, Vodge, should we? I mean, they, they have done this in the second round a bunch when it comes to injury guys. Uh, so, no, I, I would take Benson or I would wait on right. But I do like Jonathan Brooks as a player. I would take an offensive lineman and a wide receiver and go and get Ray Davis later in the third. That's what that's what Dude, that's what Batch would do. That's what Batch would I'm do. I'm with you. I'm with you on Ray Davis, man. That guy, he he's better than Blake Corum. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, you know, people are going to talk about his age and all that, but, you know, you ain't trying to hold on to running backs that long anyway. And no. there, there are some other players that may do things physically better than Ray Davis. But as far as Ray Davis catching the football, running the football, and something that Audrick Estime don't do is block his ass off, Oh, yeah. Ray Ray Davis is my guy, man. I got man. I, I was watching Audrey Gaston, man. I was upset how big he is and how trash he is blocking. Ray Davis, yeah. Ray Davis is a dude blocking. He will. The front. And it's even more embarrassing when you watch a uh, vital mm-hmm. that that little five eight dude pass block, and then it's like, what the hell are you doing, Audrey Gaston? Like, come on. But I'm with you 100, percent man. I, I I love that kid. I think he's awesome. Ray Davis, you watch him against Florida. He yeah. takes over that game. And he's a guy that's going to run routes down the field for you in the passing game. So I agree with you 100%. But my two sneaking backs in this class are Wright and Davis. Like, those are the two dudes. If I don't take a Benson or I don't take a Brooks, I would circle back to Wright in the third, assuming he makes it, or I would take Ray Davis day three. I was watching film with some of my audience in the Patreon, and this play right here made everybody scream. Ray Davis in the backfield, right? Top of the route, hand fighting. Yep. Hand fighting to the pylon. Are you kidding me? Look at him me? stack. Look at him get that stack. Let's go back. Dog, he, and, 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 and look, man, people can say what they want about Ray Davis, man, but Ray Davis looks like one of those dudes that get drafted day three, but he wins the Super Bowl with somebody. Stepping up, blocking people, dog. Man, I'm, I'm so impressed with Ray Davis, man. But, you know. Three down back, thick as a bowl of oatmeal, man. That, that guy's a badass. 
man, Zach Warchuk, this was way too fun, man. I thought this was going to be like work or something. And I thought that we wouldn't have this much draft chemistry, man. But shit, we all right, man. What's good, man? Well, come on, man. Why We should we should do this a lot. I mean, draft almost over. But at some point, we should get back and talk some talk some Cowboys or something, man. This was awesome. Dude, I, I am in 100%, man. Real, recognize real. I appreciate everything you're doing out there. Uh, whenever you want to have, like, an honest discourse to individuals, which has never happened in the history of, of Dallas Cowboys football and Dak Prescott, yeah. I think we could do it. Well, I'm gonna call Dak Prescott a top three, a top three quarterback in the league, and I'm gonna call him elite. And if you're on board with that, then we could talk about it for an hour. All right? Sounds Zach, good. Zach Woolchuck on the on the on the draft show does a great job on the draft show. And uh, G Bag Nation 105.3 The Fan two to seven. Man, this was a pleasure, man. Uh, what's your um, Twitter? I know it's not just regular Zach Woolchuck, is it? It is. It is just at Zach Woolchuck. Z a c h w o l c h u k. All right, cool. And for the rest of y'all, man, uh, appreciate y'all. Go click on the David Hellman video. Click on the Duke Manny Weather video. Click on the film session. Love y'all to peace. Y'all hold it down for the dosy. Wilson. Peace. We still next time. Salute.